everyone and welcome to day two of Adobe Live. How is everyone today? If you're in the last stream and hanging out or hanging out now, thanks for staying. And if you're just now tuning in, thanks for joining us. We have an exciting stream ahead of us. I'm your host, Shauna Lynn, and I'm here with the very talented Chris Blackstock. Chris, how are Hello. you today? Doing good. Awake, alive, ready to paint. So good. I mean, that's like the three most important things, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got coffee, well, food, good. Yeah, I'm, I got my tea. I'm ready to go. This we've had a we had a cold uh, cold snap pull through last night, so my face Ooh. hurts. Um, so I'm <laughs> nursing tea, and uh, I see yes. we've got we've got Wade in chat. We've got Sean. I see actually your pop you popped into chat. Uh, oh, Paco's yeah. there. We've got Sam Peterson, Steve. Hello everyone. How are you? How is everyone doing? Um, so before we get started, if you missed the last Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Sam Peterson, you can catch the second week of replays every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Get my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just like forget to breathe. You know, it's normal. Yeah, no, um, I get it. Yeah. Uh, today we have the Artist Spotlight, so don't forget to submit your recommendations for creatives to highlight for our next Artist Spotlight, where we highlight and hype a member of our creative community. If you'd like to be considered for a future Artist Spotlight, make sure to submit your Behance portfolio by clicking the tab labeled Artist Spotlight above the chat. You'll see Chat, Info, Artist Spotlight. Click that. Insert your Behance there. And if you are hanging out over on YouTube, please come join us over at behance.net slash Adobe Live. We are reading the chat over here on on Behance, I won't be able to see the chat on YouTube. So I can't answer any questions. I can't pass any questions on. Chris can't interact with you. Like the party's over here. The cool kids are over here. So like come hang out with us because we welcome you. So remember behance.net slash Adobe live. And Adobe Max is scheduled for October 26th to 28th. So make sure you join yeah. Adobe. Yes, I'm excited. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I am excited. So and I'm sure of, chat a lot of is big too. time speakers. I mean, this looks loaded. It's yeah. Keenan Thompson is part of it. Like, holy so smokes. Tilda Swinton. Hello. Yes. Tilda Swinton. My Brian goodness. Cranston. I mean, Come on. There's so many good ones and everyone it's free. Like you literally have yeah. no excuse to not sign up. So make sure you sign up at max.adobe.com. Again, it'll be October 26th to 28th. It's a fantastic um, creative conference full of inspiration, a way to connect with creatives around the world and learn the best ways to bring your ideas to life. And it's open to everyone. Doesn't matter if you are across the world, if you are, you know, here in the States, if you're up in Antarctica, down in Antarctica, I don't know, join us. It's fun. <laughs> Um, and in, in, yeah, in anticipation of Adobe Max, Adobe is bringing us visual conversations with a weekly theme. Adobe has created a gathering place for creatives where you can join the conversation with some of the top creative professionals working now. The conversation starts every Monday and runs through the following Sunday and features five hosts with five different conversations. This week's theme is illustration, so be sure to join in on the conversation and share your work at maxvisualconversations.com. And if you miss any of the streams this week, you can watch all the replays right here on Adobe on Behance. Um, and if you want to continue to watch streamers and support people, there are other streamers here on Behance that you can come and watch their creative process and hype them. And That's Adobe hosts, cool. it really is. It's, it's a cool, really cool yeah. feature. It's yeah, like, no, I love it. It's fan and Adobe hosts uh, streamers during the off time. So there's always something to watch. Mm -hmm. So come join us and like watch everyone create amazing things it's awesome and yeah at that point uh right. yeah if you'd like to introduce yourself chris and a little of your work and then tell the audience what you're working on today and we can recap what you did yesterday let's get yeah, started yeah, yeah. let's do it let me um gosh golly geez i forgot to pull up uh 
the website. You know, I'll go into Instagram this time. All right, let's, let's switch it up. Um, but yeah, we were working on a super fun Cyclops who looks like he's at a wonderful dinner party. I also sort. have our names pulled up so we can name him today. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. Oh, you're being... Hmm. It's being a little Fun, finicky. Yeah. Let's see here. Maybe I can just zoom in on this. I don't know why it's it's not letting me expand it. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. I don't know if you guys... Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, maybe I can just do it manually here. There you go. Um, yeah, that's better. Go ahead and click here. Um, so I am an illustrator, character designer, concept artist. Um, done stuff for animation, theme parks, uh, electronic musicians, producers like Skrillex, Haywire. I worked with the Disney Imagineering, Augenblick Studios. Um, yeah, worked with a lot of different people, a lot of different things, wear a lot of different hats. Um, but lately I've been doing a lot more of uh, character design. Um, so yeah, here's some of my work. Um, this was a recent one that I did for the Lightbox Expo. Um, and this is the demo I did. And actually I used the live stream uh, through Behance to Sweet. do that for Lightbox. So that was really cool to uh, set up my OBS, which I had never used before and everything. So. OBS is a beast. It's cool. I was like, this is rad. Um, That's another fun painting I did recently. Um, this is just watching my son play Legos and kind of, I was like, oh, there's such a, like so much happening inside his mind, you know? And like, I, I feel the same way. Cause it's like I, that imagination and, you know, visualization in my head has never left me. But so I was just kind of imagining him, like what's actually happening when he's playing with these Legos and so much more, all the storylines. Here's some character design stuff. I always love this guy. A little like voodoo. Um, part of this like Down by the Bayou series that I was working on. Nice. Um, I like that this, Lorax Seuss vibe of that cat. This one? Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is part of the like monster zoo that I was creating. I did another one uh, on a previous Adobe Live. But yeah, I like to kind of just... Uh, mash together a bunch of different animals and just kind of see what I can come up with. So those are really fun to make. Some of the, this is some of the, like the old, um, oh, there's some of the covers I've done. Um, this one's really cool. This was actually um, using some watercolor brushes, which I don't do that often, but it was really fun. It was cool to really almost get something that looked like traditional. Yeah. Um, this is for a buddy of mine, Swarty, who used to be in the M Machine. Really cool guy. You guys should check out his music. But yeah, some fan art, some fun stuff. I even do paper toys. Did like oh, a little cool. Steve Sisu. <laughs> um, Love so that. yeah, I do. I do all that. kinds of stuff. Yeah, uh, murals, logo design. So I'm kind of all over the place. But lately, character design and, and illustration. So yeah, if you guys get a chance, check out. It's uh, the underscore Blackstock. Um, on Instagram. But yeah. Sweet. So I'll get into what we're going to do today. Um, yeah. So his his current name is Cyclops Sal. You guys can chime in again, but I just ended up on that last night. Um, I'll post in chat what the ideas were as of like yeah, yeah, yeah. yesterday. And so this is where we left it. And there was a few, like it just was almost there, but I, wanted to do a little bit more. And so I will switch over to the new version. And so I had, you guys had mentioned, like, it kind of looked like the Hercules Cyclops and stuff. And it's like, which is awesome. Cause that's an awesome design, but I don't want it to tie into that. Like I want this to be its own character. And so I thought, okay, this guy, he should be more of like a demon, like a mm -hmm. cool cat Cyclops, not like a big blundering, like, Ooh. So gave him some horns, kind of decided that like he has these like demon pals. So like this, I don't know if you guys can see it, but he's not bone cufflinks. He's like, he's like hanging out now. Like he's like a he's partying with 
with the Cyclops. So, you know, he's got his, he's like the little demon. And then in the end, eventually he'll smoke him in one of his cigars. And you've got the like spirits coming out into the smoke. Oh my gosh. Um, it's got and so, night. <laughs> yeah. So I just, it, it added a little bit more story. I like the colors are a lot richer now. And it's definitely got more of that that vibe that I wanted. Um, and it, it's also more of like, you know, like it's like a cool guy. He's like, he's a cool guy at the party. Like you'd want to hang out with this dude and his little party skeleton. <laughs> um, and then I just added like a kind of a darker background to make that pop and did like a quick um, kind of brush in just to kind of see how things would um, start to fit with this. And then I also, for the body, I started to um, add some shadow. So, and so now, oh, wow. yeah, so now I'm really starting to kind of see where the light's coming in and just starting to render with shadow. And so that's pretty much where I'm going to start from. Since most of the skin is done is like, cause I'll go in and I'll block out all the shadows first. And then as I move, um, I'll start to kind of add some more color in there and move into some like small highlights. And then usually beyond that, it's it, I, usually it's more systematic, but since this is kind of more fun, I might be like going back into shadow layers and adding colors that I normally wouldn't do or like kind of mixing things up. Cause I don't have to, again, I don't have to like show this to a client. I don't have to change it. I can just kind of hit it and quit it. So I'm just, I'd, probably going to be a little bit sloppier this time around than I would normally for a, a bigger piece. But so, yeah, like let's it. start rendering. If you guys have any questions about anything, please in the chat, let yeah. me know. Darina says the skeleton is on God knows how many martinis. Oh, man. This party's so great. Many. <laughs> Those are dirty, dirty martinis. Lots of olive juice. And, uh, Dranoa says, I love the details and nuance in design. Thank you. This is a fun one. And I'll say, do you want to hear the names that we had yesterday? Yeah. Okay. So we had Engelbert Twinklegaze, Mr. Blinksy J. Scry Guy, Mr. Hat, Engelbert Single Gaze, Mr. <laughs> Cyclod, Dr. Charm. Mr. Third Eye, Mr. Monocle, Sir Theodore Crestbone, and then I had an idea this morning. It was Reginald Once Eye. <laughs> Reginald Once Eye. Um, they're all pretty good. <laughs> Straw pole. <laughs> 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 you know what to do. You know what to do, Wade. <laughs> he would too. Make, we're just gonna make Wade do straw poles the entire time. Guys, Listen, trivia we'll questions. Wait, if you want to do this, I will message you these in Slack so you don't have to try to copy paste from the weird <laughs> mashup it does because it does not give you enters anywhere. So I'm getting, so I'm getting some glare. Oh, God, that's too funny. Oh, God, Wade says I'm on it. Okay, hang on, dude. I will uh, give me oh two seconds. God. Let me go find you. Yo. All right. Boom. All right. Wade has it. Straight hey, incoming. <laughs> it's hard to see. Let's, there we go. That's better. The subtle little like details you added, like the little bone cufflinks are so good. Got to do it. You got to do it. Well, especially if it's not for a client, like you gotta, you really gotta do it. Go, go big or go home. Yeah, I wanna have, I wanna have some fun. Well, I just wanted, I think with a lot of things, like I just wanted more story, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, I know I can draw. And it's like, that's, I'm done with that part. It's like, it's all about story now. Um, what, why, why are you drawing the character? What's the point of it? Why am I doing this portrait? You know, like, yeah. Having having the storyline is what really makes it fun and why people are going to want to look at it. So, 
you'd say for like most of your illustrations then if not all are story driven then oh man I'll, I'll, almost always I, I wouldn't say obviously there's all this the things you draw where you just kind of draw them to draw them but um for the most part i would say 90 percent of the things that i do are story driven um and I, i've always been that way since i was a kid I just, I think it like just, God, I used to play in my room for hours by myself with just like GI Joes and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? just like epic storylines. Like he's going to punch him in the stomach and then the face and then he's going to fly off the cliff, but oh, he turns around, grabs the branch. He's still there and he's going to cut, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> like directing my own films. So yeah, I think it's always, just, it's fun. That's what I love about animation. Um, there's just something special about being able to see a character and instantly kind of knowing part of his story or at least being able to kind of figure out like, oh, okay, I can see where this person's yeah. from or I kind of get, get what's happening. Yeah. I think there's definitely merit to like drawing for the sake of just drawing. And that's more in this, you know, just the fun sketch phase, but it is really oh, yeah. cool when you can come up with a story that helps drive the illustration further. Completely, because I love just drawing to draw. I mean, that's that's why I'm here, because that's definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to draw, because I love it. Oh, um, Wade made a poll. Good job, Wade. Thank you, Wade. We appreciate you. Wade, you can just moderate all of the chats that I'm on, please. All right, I am going to set it so that it auto-refreshes the votes for me. And we'll we'll give them we'll give people a few minutes because it's gonna take some time for them to truly okay. spend time voting. I will say, like, I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, I've had to learn how to really work on creating things that are more story driven because for a long time I did lettering, so it was very aesthetically driven. Mm. Right, 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 right. I mean, definitely. That's and I think that's the technical side. Like I I would always do a lot of things where it's just like, well, why is this that or what? And it's like, I don't know. It looks good. Yeah. You know, like uh, I'm just trying to make it look good. And, this, and then after a while, I was like, okay, I can make things look good. But now, now it's all about intent and, mm -hmm. and even representing that intent in nonsense. Like, okay. Yeah. I want this to be nonsensical. I want this to feel random, but kind of realizing that that was my, that's what I, I needed to really work on is, is my intent. Yeah. There was a point in, uh, when I was in college, cause I, I studied, I did like fine art and stuff growing up and mm -hmm. tried getting into digital art and would always try to do digital art, but I wasn't very good at it. And mm -hmm. in high school, they were like, no, for this show, like you have to, like, you got to create a, you, know, you got to do fine art and stuff for this. And I still did digital, but whatever. <laughs> Um, but we were always kind of told like, you have to have meaning behind what you're doing. You have to have you know, a story. You have to have this, you have to that. And I was very much, a, I just, I'd make things because I know it's going to look good. I do right. this because it's going, I just know it's going to look good. And right. when I got to college, I went through that same thing again, where I, and I remember there was a day I was in, uh, I was in my printmaking class. I was taking screen printing and our, um, professor, uh, John Hutchinson, who was a master printer and he worked on like Lichtensteins and all kinds of things like an incredible dude oh, wow. pulled me aside one day and he's holding my my screen print and he goes I need to know what this means right now he goes I have been staring at this for the last three days and I can't figure out what the story is and I was like do you want do you want the real answer or do you want the bs answer <laughs> and he's like think? yeah he's like what's what's the what's the bs answer and I came up with this like really like off the wall thing and he's like what's which the is real a skill answer? that's a good skill to have in which is a skill <laughs> yeah and then he's like what's the real answer i was like i thought it would look cool and he goes keep doing what you're doing because you're on to something <laughs> and at that point i was like a light bulb went off and i was like well maybe all these people that are like coming up with these deep deep stories behind their pieces maybe not all of them are actually true they're just oh, doing yeah. it so it sounds like they know it oh yeah that's and that's the thing it's like this piece it's for me, it's like, I don't come up with it before I make the draw. Like 
Yeah. I am not one of those people where it's like, I've got all these ideas in my head and I'm just going to like, everything's worked out. It's like, I was like, okay, I want to draw a monster. Um, Cause that'd be fun. I don't, you know, I don't get to do that very often anymore. And then, okay, I want to do something with Halloween. So maybe like a classic monster not make one up, but like something that people are familiar with. Okay. And then, you know, I did the test Dracula and I was like, that's cool. But like, I want to do something a little bit weirder. It's like, oh, okay, a Cyclops. Okay, I'll do a Cyclops. And then, you know, and it's like that progression of like moving to the next piece. It's like, okay, I'd drawn out my Cyclops and looked at it and the drawing was okay. And there was some story there. But then like last night working on it, I was like, okay, this cycle, he's not smoking like people. It's like, he's in some other, like another realm or something. He's smoking demons, you know? Like these are his buddies, but he also like uses yeah. them for energy. And like, you know, it's like you kind of, start like spitballing and it's it's i like spraying i do better when i brainstorm as i work mm -hmm. because if i try to do it all ahead of time it, it usually becomes too convoluted or too complex and it doesn't certain things that are working out in your head aren't really gonna don't always make sense when you put it on paper yeah it's so, almost like you put too many parameters in place exactly which sometimes is, is great right like having those um Putting, putting boundaries, putting limits on things can sometimes, it's like making a diamond. It's like the more pressure you put, the more things you squeeze out, you're able to like really mm -hmm. refine it and make something amazing. But I feel like in the, sometimes in the beginning stages, um, it can be more detrimental. Yeah. Unless you have a very specific brief or something that you're working from where those boundaries are kind of already set. Um, but. Yeah, I could, that makes sense. I mean, I guess, I kind of do that. I like, I'll just sit down, I'll just start sketching something. And I think, well, this character could be really cute doing something. Yeah. You're like, all right, I got this. So when'd you start, um, like, when'd you start doing it more for like narrative storytelling and, uh, just over a year ago. Oh, cool. So this yeah, is like, like, it's like a relatively new kind of thing that you've been exploring. Yeah. I like, I've been exploring character design for the better part of like five or six years at this point, but I never okay. had enough time to actually sit down and focus it. Um, right. and especially cause like, as I would start to focus it, I'd get up and bunch of lettering jobs in. So I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then once the panini hit work dried up and I had things to, Love I it. had all this time and I was like, well, this is going to be the best way for me to just distract my brain from the fact that I can't go anywhere um that i hate paninis yeah <laughs> well because when it when it first when everything first shut down here it was still i mean it was technically spring but there was still a foot and a half of snow outside and it was sure. cold so you could yeah. and everywhere was closed so it wasn't like you could retreat to a coffee shop or anything so you were just sort of stuck inside and it wasn't right. you know it was cold so you couldn't go sit on the deck or something and so right it was like a month and a half at that point of me just being like, I'm going stir crazy. I need to do things. And so I just started playing with character more. And um, then in that October that year or last year, October, I reached out to an agent who I had met him several years back when he was working at a, at a publisher. And mm -hmm. I just, I was just like, I don't know if you remember me, we met back when um, I I'm really interested in pursuing this and would love to talk to you about representation. And he wrote back and he was like, let's do this. Let's talk. Um, and he was That's like, awesome. well, you just need to, yeah, he was like, you need to work on more character work. I need to know what it would look like in this instance, in this instance, but like you're on a good track. So let's, right. let's do, you know, work on that and then let's touch base again. Right. Um, and then I messaged him in February and he goes, I sent him like a PDF of everything that I'd done. And he's like, this is it. This is excellent here's your contract. And I was like, okay, was not expecting, was not expecting to get signed today, but okay. Yeah. This will work. Yeah. <laughs> I was business. like, I will, I'm not going to say no. Yeah. Popped a bottle of champagne. And parents got go. home. I was like, Hey, we're drinking. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look like, at me, I mom. Got <laughs> <laughs> no hands. But it was a, it, and it was, but it was a series of very fortunate circumstances that I was in where I, I'm, you know, in a, I'm in a situation where I was able to take that time to do that, but yes. I ended up realizing I really love doing characters. I never thought I would. Right. But they're fun. Oh my God. It's the best. Yeah. I can't say I've ever, I've never done monsters though. I've done like, oh, 
I, okay, Voodoo Val and I were doing, we were doing vampires one night. And so we, I did like the classic vampires. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did like a Nosferatu and then I wrote Bite Me all around him. Nice. And then we did the, you know, the 1991 Dracula with the big like hair bun things. It's got like oh, the- yeah. Gary Oldman? Yeah. Keanu that Reeves? One. Yeah. Puts in his beautiful British accent or whatever he was trying to achieve in the- <laughs> Yeah, I drew him and Voodoo Val christened it Bun Bun Kula. Bun Bun Kula. Bun Bun oh Kula. Nice. So like that's about the, and, and like I've drawn like a little like QC Frankenstein, but I've never like actually ventured into monsters. But this dream is making me want to try. So much fun. I, I feel like I've been um, drawing monsters since I was little. Yeah. So I was always into the macabre and oh, okay. the darker side of life. It's just, it's, I've always been attracted to it. Um, that's why I really didn't do, um, sorry, I have a weird glare, glare issues. So I'm trying to like maneuver You do what you around. gotta do. <laughs> um, and I feel like it's why I kind of avoided animation for a while. Cause it just, at the time I was like, uh, no one's going to want to like, see like no one wants to see what i'm doing or at least it's yeah. not appropriate for <laughs> the crowd that's going to see these movies um and eventually i think as i got older i was trying not to make stuff so intense and trying to really like focus be like okay i do love making these things but like i also see the value of making my work accessible yeah and so i as i got older i started to kind of not shy away from but just focusing less on the intensity of my work and just being like okay i need it needs to it's it's okay to like make these things but maybe let's try this or like let's go in this direction or let's try to like not make it so so out of bounds that like people are gonna have a knee-jerk reaction to it or you know, yeah make it like more as, marketable yeah i mean i had some uh, uh, I'm sure I, <laughs> some of these things on that i was making were pretty, uh, pretty intense like they're definitely oh, not okay. like not safe for work and stuff and uh -huh. okay <laughs> but um yeah it was just uh, that was like a different time and like it, as i got older i think once i had kids too i was like man i want to try to get back into more of like accessible characters still weird still still funny still you know yeah but really try to try to get back to that because i do love i do love animation so so much um, and it's such a cool world uh, to be a part of would you work the, at like an animation studio if you were presented the opportunity oh for sure in a heartbeat in a heartbeat um it's kind of tough. I mean, it is tougher with um, um, character design just because there's not a lot of spaces open and a mm -hmm. lot of character designers end up freelancing or uh, short contracts for projects or you're just in pre-production and like once they move in, you know. So, but yeah, oh my gosh, if I could have like an in-house job, best, I, I've been doing the freelance thing for a pretty long time. Yeah. Which is great. It's, you know, as far as flexibility and kind of being able to say yes or no to things. And, but she would like that uh, steady check. That, <laughs> that freelance, sweet, sweet like, steady income. <laughs> yeah. Freelance is always just like, feast, famine, <laughs> feast, famine. Yeah. All the, all the things that like adults are supposed to have. Yeah. Yeah. All those things that like they don't teach us in school if we're gonna freelance that we need to take care of. Yeah. So like, oh, yeah. About that. I mean, you can't, you know, I've learned it's like with you can you can kind of set that stuff up for yourself. It's just you're holding yourself accountable where it's usually mm -hmm. just done automatically for you through the, you know, the employer and it's a little yeah. bit easier to deal with. You're like, oh yeah, that just comes out of my check. That's just and yeah, you have it yourself, you're like, I don't wanna I need that money. <laughs> you yeah. can't take that out of my check. Unlike that, like insurance, it's like, 
I I hate having to buy my own insurance, but like I need it. It's pretty, and it came, yeah. You know, pretty it came important. in handy this year because I sprained my ankle and had to oh, do PT. No. So I actually hit my deductible thanks to physical therapy. So at that point, I've just been like, well, I'm going to take care of all these things that I've been worried about because I don't have to pay anymore. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I've got Woo-hoo! four months. We're going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do that bike jump that I was so <laughs> eager to do. Oh, man. Yeah. So I'm just using the. Let's see. Using what's this brush? Oh, it's the same brush I was using yesterday to sketch. Soft texture. Um, just kind of have the opacity lowered to about like thirty percent. I'm just kind of like working it in. That's so wild how like quickly shadows can make such dimension come out. Oh, uh, huge! Just what a difference. And these shadows is actually, you know what this reminds me of is very, it's very Space Jam. Mm. It's like the first one, the first one. I don't, I've not seen the the new one, but like OG Space Jam. Don't see it. It's terrible. Okay. Okay. It was, then I'm okay not seeing a, it. It was a horrific display of what, how not to make an animated film. Oh, oh, that's disappointing. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. And I'm sure they were like, they were targeting our generation. Like we're gonna get these millennials again, and it's like, mm-mm. Uh, it was, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, LeBron James is a great basketball player, probably one of the best basketball players, but mm-hmm. he is a terrible actor. <laughs> he like, yeah. he like, he just tries too hard. You know, you know how to like if you people that like aren't really actors, it's like you try to act, and then you end up just kind of nothing. It never feels real. Yeah, the performance. And because there were some cool parts as far as like they they were able to like kind of like squeeze in some uh, 2D animation mm-hmm. here and there, which I thought was cool. But the storyline was just so weak. Oh. And like Don, I and I never seen I've never seen a bad acting performance by Don Cheadle, and he was yeah terrible in it. Oh, I was just that's... Like, what? oh, it crushed my little heart because I love Space Jam. <laughs> Yeah, so he's in, and he's in Marvel. Like he does a great job in Marvel. Oh yeah, I just they, I don't know spoilers, guys. You could spoil Space Jam. I don't know if you can. You know, spoil itself, but um, he's like a uh, he's like living in a computer, and he like wants to use like LeBron James like social media to like make him famous. Uh, it's like the, the what? Plot line. <laughs> it's so stupid. You're like, why can't you just have more aliens? It's Space Jam. <laughs> Wait, why are we going? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a computer. That's so like, or it could be a computer, but maybe it's like an alien that lives in computer. Like, yeah, ah, I just was so frustrated. I was like, this they just, is they they great. tried, but they like just missed the mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, I don't think they were in. They they went inside the stadium. <laughs> they oh. were they were scalping tickets outside. <laughs> oh gosh, that's so disappointing. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, they sorry just if I, sorry if I have any space space jam two fans out there. I just pooped all over your movie. Yeah. No, it's uh that's the hard thing too, is like when you have such a such a um what's the word I'm looking for? Like a nostalgia for something. Oh yeah. Them bringing it, you know, trying to redo it. You're always gonna compare it to the thing that you have nostalgia for. Like like all the Muppet movies, like all the newer ones, a lot of people have been like, these are not, these are not the traditional Muppet jokes. Like these don't hit the mark. Like everything, it just, it's just not quite there. And yeah. then they just, re- you know, they just released Muppets Haunted Mansion. And I won't spoil oh, yeah. anything, but if you know the, if you know the Haunted Mansion, generally you'll know what the, per- what the plot is of this, but there's old school Muppet jokes, like the really bad puns. Mm-hmm. And that has like i had a lot of friends that were watching they're like this is amazing because that's what we all have missed are these like really bad muppet puns yeah that's the 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 comedy is so ridiculous i mean it's just yeah. the, the muppets yeah the muppets they've got 
fists inside of them, making them yeah. talk and little marionettes. <laughs> yeah. This should be as silly as possible. Exactly. I mean, like we got to, we grew up with Muppet Treasure Island and oh Muppet God, Christmas that's... Carol. I, I was trying to get my son to watch that. And he's like, dad, I'm bored. I'm like, oh my what? God. I'm like, you're four, so I will forgive you, but you will, you will appreciate this later. You're, you're soon like, where did I fail as a father? <laughs> yeah. How do you not like this? It's pirates I... and Muppets put into one. Yeah. And this Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah, and Tim Curry. Oh, Tim Curry. I just, I can't tell you how many times I quote that movie where big, ugly, butt face baby eating O'Brien. I... <laughs> 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 we were we actually ended up quoting that in one of Val's I think Val's was hosting last week or something we ended up quoting uh -huh. it in the chat and I was like the raging volcano is a frog <laughs> Stoney's in the chat going light the lamp not the rat <laughs> oh my god the rat <laughs> oh gosh oh, it's so good. light the lamp not the rat um Let's see, I'm catching up on chat because we are having some fun conversation. Um, Janelle says the inevitable end of the martini drinking skelly being stuffed into the next, the next, uh, I don't know what that is. Um, basically the thing, yeah, the next cigar the Cyclops smokes is stellar smoking those he's quote unquote living it up, which creates real depth to, depth to the character. Um, Thank you. Carrie says, such thing as an antique design, it it feels old fashioned and flat is what to what it is now. It's interesting because like even even the 2D animation of like stuff we watched in the 80s versus mm -hmm. like the stuff that came in like the later 90s, like suddenly there were shadows and right. a little bit of dimension brought to these characters versus being very flat. Right. Yeah, and it's like you, you know, it was basically the digital age mm -hmm. and how they were able to start to uh, render the shadows came this yeah. whole thing because you, you know you're painting everything with cell vinyl um you can't everything's got to be on like a flat you're not really blending yeah with those i don't know if anybody's used cell vinyl but it's, it's almost it's, it's almost like gouache kind of maybe a little bit different it's it's like wash and acrylic um but it's it's very finicky and like you, but it's great for uh, painting on acetate you know the film the animation film but yeah yeah so it just it kind of it's like the technology kind of dictates those things right and oh my god i don't know if one of my favorite most recent films is klaus i was like i've not watched that yet it is on my oh, to watch that is my like you will not find a better 2d animated film really like, okay. as far as as far as like the technique that they developed it's yeah. it's next level like that is the future of 2d animation Ooh. they they figured it out that's what it is like it's i was just like blown away the kind of like the the technique that they ended up developing is just so freaking cool I've, I've had it on my watch list and I just didn't get around to it last year. So oh I gosh, am going to make that a priority this year. It's, um, it's something else. It really is. Yeah. Another one I really like was Spider-Verse. Oh, okay. Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Another <laughs> mind blowing. That was all three. Yeah. But yeah, it was, but it, the 2D elements that they incorporated was really cool in terms of like well, making like, it kind um, of look like it was a comic. Right, it was like uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines. I don't know if you've seen that one. I've not um, watched that one yet. No, that's Netflix. So that's right? by the same. Uh, that's yeah. It was on net. Yeah, it's on Netflix, but that's also done by Sony Pictures. Oh, okay. And they did Spider Verse as well. So okay. it's a lot of the same people that worked on that, and you can tell because it's just. It's not just making your typical three D. It's like let's we could we got. We can do whatever we want and it's like yeah integrating all of these different special effects and like flat layers and making it look like a you know yeah it, it has that same vibe of like it feels like you're in this girl's sketchbook as she's drawing oh, it cool. and like so it's got all these like beautiful moments and they've done this great like cell shading kind of style and um that one that was on just my... yeah that one was really impressive as well 
as far as just kind of new list. new techniques and just kind of a new approach to animation yeah i remember watching spider verse i was like i just sat there and i could not take my eyes off the screen i was so impressed by the animation and how well it was done and music was great and oh yeah spider verse so yeah, that's my yes. son's favorite movie and i'm Is like it? i'm okay with this oh my god he loves yeah it. good taste He's obsessed, with, obsessed with spider-man which i get Aww. it he's that's not obsessed cute. with spider-man seriously um wade goes so there will now be a timestamp for the stream that says 3110 space jam critique <laughs> it's so bad yeah. And Such Wade also movie. says, I really liked the Muppets Haunted Mansion special, cheesy and enjoyable. It was like, and if you love, if you love the Haunted Mansion, like you will probably love this movie. Um, I got to check it out now. Yeah. Like I, I, that's my favorite ride. So there's a lot of, a, like it's a, a lot of it is like basically the ride made into movie form. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. There's a With lot the of Muppets. like allusions to things and you're just going to be like, that's it. Ah, yes. <laughs> I love this. That's it, Kronk. That's it. Um, well, I'll be, I'll be going to Disneyland. Let's see. My son's birthday on the 25th. Always excited to go during like the, the Halloween, the Halloween Christmas time. Yeah. I have this, this life goal is to ride every haunted mansion in the world. And I think there's like six total. So there's one in Paris. Yeah. Does technically Japan, does Tokyo have one? Yes. Theirs is a different okay. version, but there is, right. there's one in Tokyo, Shanghai, Paris. The Shanghai one's crazy. It's like the. The Albert, like the a, little monkey and the. Yes. And it's like. You know explorer. why they did that, right? Well, because they didn't, it didn't cross over culturally to like. have. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. It, it was like offensive to the culture to show ghosts. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that part. So it's a completely different thing that includes like magic and mystery and specter, but it's not haunted. Interesting. Yeah. And then, and of course there's, you know, Disney world, but then Disneyland technically has two because they have their standard haunted mansion. And then they have the haunted mansion holiday. Wait, so what? <laughs> yeah. Disneyland. Haunted... The haunt... Yeah. Explain. They do. Um, yeah, explain. It's, a nightmare before Christmas. They convert. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Completely. That's the yeah. That's what I'm excited to go to. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, Steve says Spider Verse is awesome. Alejandro says Klaus with big star eyes. Um, oh my God, Carrie it's says, so good. Yes. Wade says I've never been on the ride, so now that will be in reverse. If I ever do go on the ride, Wade, I will send you a ride through link on YouTube or something because you can kind of like get an idea through these like ride throughs. I watch them when I'm feeling oh, sad. Um, but, yeah, during <laughs> to when, feel something. We, we used to go. We had uh, we still have annual passes, but we did. And then obviously the someone made a panini that wasn't any good, mm -hmm. and um, and like it was like a big bummer because it was something that we yeah. would do and this is before my son was like in big boy school so it was just, just go anytime we could just go yeah my wife would just take him or i'd go with him and so when we stopped going we're just like oh, man like we just want to and so we would watch the youtube videos mm -hmm. and i was like this is amazing and then that's when we started like we're like all right we're gonna go on this ride but like in every different country and like do that and yes. that's when i started to see i was like damn that's it would be yeah. fun if like i was in tokyo or paris or something you know like to go because before i was like don't go to disneyland i'm like oh it's so different yeah well and it's i used to, I, last year when it did happen i was and i was feeling like you know claustrophobic and just like itching to get outside i just started i'd sit there and i'd full screen them and i'd put my headphones on <laughs> and i'm like i just need to feel something and i would ride soren <laughs> Things. Hold on. You would ride Soren. <laughs> it's like the least expected <laughs> ride that somebody would say. Did you did you have some like orange next to you? And you're saying like, squish. <laughs> no, it's just the music makes me really happy. And so I do Soren or I do like Small World or I do Haunted Mansion. Nice. And 
Um, the Pirates in, I think, Shanghai is wild. It's a lot of... Oh, um, it's insane because it's the one... Yeah. The, the the earth's end or whatever where it's like the mm-hmm. big cat like chasm like the thing opens up yeah. and you fall off like the edge and goes flips you upside down and yeah that was yeah, where it like cool. actually incorporates like more movie than it does like the traditional lore yes yes that's and it's like a ton of like integrated screens and yeah that one's pretty insane yeah um so carrie would like to know how did you decide on your colors question um i winged it am i not supposed to say that (laughs) um so there's no judgment here (laughs) yeah i was gonna do all these things and then just didn't have a lot of time so i was like i just kind of have to pick and go with it um Mm -hmm. usually i feel like a lot of the times i'll just kind of i'll kind of start with like what works and then slowly tweak it out and kind of see like where i can push it so i knew that i wanted to do kind of like a red red green you know complementary color um palette and just kind of try to keep as much warmth and like saturation in the front and i knew that smoke i think one thing too is i knew the smoke here was gonna be this kind of like um turquoise like almost like really bright um green blue thing going on here terrible with color names by the way um, I, i'd call that like a like a spectral mint yeah they, ooh, see there you go uh, my spectral mint and so if i know certain colors that i want i'll kind of work off of that so i had his big red face and i was like i want him to have this like bright red skin and so i kind of already had that and then before i had i kept i was had the brown suit and i was like eh, it kind of works but then i was like okay if he's more of like a demon you know, I was like, well, maybe it needs to be really dark, like a black suit. And I was like, yeah, but that's not, I don't really want to paint that dark. I want to keep more color in it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of moved into this more like, um, it's almost burgundy maroon, but maybe it's got a little more violet in it. Um, so yeah, if you find the Pantone color for this, let me know guys. That's yeah, a pet spectre you, green. Yeah. I'll give you a hex code or no, the, the, the suit color. Oh, the suit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, a lot of the times, um, like I said, since this one's kind of just more fun, I didn't spend like a ton of time trying to figure it out. Um, if it's, if it was for like, if I was doing this for a client, I would give them like multiple looks like, this is what we can do. And this is like how we can make it look and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then kind of go from there. But this time Mm -hmm. around, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go, go by feel and see where I can get. In an instance like that, if you were to send it to a client, would you have like, like mini color studies to show how the colors would work together or. Yeah. How do you go about that? (laughs) Oh, usually I'll just, I'll just create like duplicates and then color fill. Um, Okay. If I'm doing it just depends like if i want if yeah obviously if i want to do like more than that and like i'll yeah do like quick color studies just like really simple um color studies on top with maybe like a little bit of like light direction and things mm-hmm. but i kind of realized that with like honestly with most clients it's like they're not going to know better than me so for the yeah. most part they i i always just try to figure out like what like, what's your vibe? Like, what do you want out of this? Like, what's the end goal for this piece or for this artwork or. Um, yeah. Like drawing him hot pink with a bright purple suit wouldn't fit the mood you're going for in this instance. Yeah. I mean, maybe, but yeah, I think um, that would have to be a little more experimentation and kind of. Yeah. <laughs> how could I make that work? Um, so yeah. And if I'm working with, um, I'm going to try something. I'm just going to figure I could just do this. Oops. What's going on here? Why isn't it selected? Oh, one of the colors. Oh my gosh. Oh, see, see what I did there? Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I just drew all my shadows on. <laughs> I wanted to create a shadow layer and I forgot. That's okay. Oh no. That's okay. 
Carrie says, I feel like the colors sometimes just ruin my drawing or illustration and I'll sit and sit trying to decide on the colors. Like, should they be mm. complimentary or seasonal or all in theme? Yeah, that's, that's kind of a tough one. Um, colors hard. There's like no way around it. Yeah. Colors just can be really difficult and can be a lot of work. It mm -hmm. makes me angry. See, I just messed up. That's okay. I'm just gonna oh, have to no. do it the old. Gonna have to do it the old school way. I'm just gonna have to um, paint in my own shadows here. Yeah, Dorina would like to know how you decided on the artboard size for this. What size are you working at? So I'm not working super big. Um, I'm working eight by ten, uh, three hundred DPI, which I think is. Gosh, what is it? It's, it's not forty. I think it's like three thousand by something something i don't have to look let's see um yeah depends i honestly did that yeah 2400 by 3000 so it's not huge but it's 300 mm -hmm. dpi so it's, it's good enough yeah um, i just didn't want my, my computer's been kind of acting up lately so i wanted to make sure that it would run this <laughs> and be okay <laughs> in case i started yeah. adding like a ton of layers um but yeah usually i'd work bigger than that i'd like i've I've worked on pieces that are just like three gigs. I feel like just cause I get so nervous about making something and then not being able to upscale it or have it big enough. Um, obviously cause with Photoshop, it's all destructive. And so you can't, can't just make it bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I usually try to work as big as I comfortably can. And then I'll downsize it afterwards to whatever I need yeah. to need it to be. Um, but yeah, this one I kind of kept small just because it'd be pretty fun, but big enough that if I wanted to like print it or something, it'd look good. Yeah. And I did an and eight it by 10 because I was doing a portrait and it's just like a standard framing size if it went yeah. to like a 16 by 20 or something. So that makes sense. I know anytime I've done spot illustrations, like even if it's going to print at, you know, three by four, whatever in a magazine, I draw it like three times the size. Mm -hmm. because exactly. I don't want them to come back and be like, actually, we want to make this a half page or something. And I have to redo the whole thing. Yeah, you're like, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. It's already been I'm done. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, here's the spot. You just fit it, fit it out how you need. Yeah. Um, Anthony Sims is here and he says, this guy looks like a monster from Space Jam Mobster. <laughs> we went... <laughs> We went from Hercules to Space Jam. <laughs> I think, though, part of what's influencing the Space Jam thing was the shading. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like a soft Especially shading. because the classic one, I remember, like, the classic Space Jam, they definitely drew in all the shadows to match the environment. Yeah, and at this point, too, it's like, um, it's just all the shadows. So it's like, until I do highlights and, like, texture, it's going to look animated because it is most animation you're usually just having. It's mostly shadow unless you're in a dynamic scene where they're gonna add highlights or something. But usually you just got the two-tone for most of the animation. Um, so I totally get it. Yeah. I totally get it. I think I'm just gonna keep using this for the shirt too. We just posted the link one more time for people to vote names. So if anyone came in late, vote for a name for this character we've got like 20 ideas do it do it yeah um see people are offering suggestions for how to learn color and um steve says watch loads of animation to see how they color match one yes. thing that i like to do is like look at artists whose work you like or find like pieces mm -hmm. that you like the colors that they use and how they used them and then pull it into photoshop and just like color pick to see how those colors yeah, lay out because sometimes that's a great idea yeah and sometimes like you go to draw you know if you go to pick a color it in isolation will look really different from what it looks like yes. when it's divided up against a different color that is very true is you have to have it. I mean, and that's why uh, a lot of the time people paint with a, a mid-tone background 
because mm-hmm. if you're just painting on a directly on a white canvas, your values are going to look very different than if you set a midtone and kind of work around that. And it helps you uh, increase your value set too and make it you know, more value. Um, yeah. But yeah, it can be really hard to tell if you don't do that, kind of like where you're at. The best way to learn color is literally just to dive in. Yes. Aja says, no matter what name wins, he will always be Engelbert Twinklegaze to me. That is a good one. It is a good one. And then Anthony says, who else voted Mr. Monocle? I like you the most. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll we'll close the poll in just a moment. And we'll announce the name of this character. He almost could have like a little like, hello, my name is tag as if he's at an event. Like he's... Maybe he's at a reunion. There we go. Maybe. You know what? I'm going to submit this to, <laughs> was it? No, that was like Halloween. Character design uh, challenge has got something going on with like, I don't know if it's like Halloween University or something. Oh, that like would a, be funny. It's going to be a reunion. Yes. You got to have those name tags at reunions because enough years go by and you're like i don't remember who you are yeah oh my god i know i i feel i am one of those people where i'll run into people and i'm like i knew you for like 10 years and i can't remember your name <laughs> I, I had that so happen bad. i had that at my tenure where one of the girls i used to hang out with came up to me and she was like shauna how you been and i was like hey i miss you how are you and it took me like 10 minutes for me to actually like place her name oh yeah I, yeah, I play the like someone else come over and ask her name or like find a yeah. way to like, how can I sneak this in so that I don't seem like a horrible, horrible person that's completely forgotten this person. Mm-hmm. My parents just went to their, I think their 40th high school reunion. Oh, wow. And my uncle, their mutual friend of the two of them, but he's like an uncle because he's been in my life my whole life. Gotcha. Um, they all graduated together and my mom was showing me pictures. She's like, I remember none of these people because <laughs> I knew all these people. I remember none of them. <laughs> Is that funny? Yep. And I was like, getting old. Yeah. Getting old. I, I graduated though in a class of 600 people. Uh, that's pretty so cool. yeah, I was in, I was in the IB program. So like my, my little group was like a hundred or so people when we graduated, but there's still like 500 people. I didn't know. And I, one guy thought I was like the significant other of one of my friends. And I was like, no, no, dude, we graduated together. (laughs) Run, run, run. (laughs) Um, My, my school is pretty small. So I I graduated with like a hundred, I think like 150 people. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. My college graduating class, like of our particular major, it was like 12 of us. Mm. Yes. And I was like, this is easy because I know all your names. This is special. Okay. Janoa says, I felt Mr. Monocle was just the start of an avenue of alliteration that can include maniacal. Ooh. Like His it. name is Maniacal Monocle. Maniacal Monocle. All right. Well, I'm going to announce the winner of the name because. Yeah, do it. All right. So, with four total votes, <laughs> we had eight, <laughs> we had 17 votes total. So, okay. the winner with four votes is Engelbert Twinklegaze. Yeah. So, I feel like you're going to have to add like a little like star in his eye. So, it's got a little twinkle. Um, okay, done. And then second runner up was Reginald One Eye. Third runner up was Engelbert Single Gaze. Actually, it was a it was a three way tie between Single Gaze, Mister Cyclot, and Mister Monocle. So, and Doctor Charm got no votes. Sorry, uh, whoever whoever submitted that one. I'm sorry. Poor poor Doctor Charm. And everything else got one vote. All right. Um, Gotta move faster, jeez. Carrie says, "I can. I think I can see him on Monsters Inc. It's the new boss taking over." Ooh, there you go. 
or he's like Mike Wazowski's like distant uncle and he's like we're gonna show you the family business son Mikey <laughs> uh, Jano says the min- oh god okay I'm gonna try the maniacal monstrous misdeeds of Mr. Monocle making mischief and misery amongst the masses there you go that's exactly that's the headline that is yeah. the, my file that'll be my file name there you go i'll actually i will copy and i will save this so that should you come later and say do you have this i can say yes i do thank you for reminding me to save let's see megan says all those names were fantastic it was a tough choice i agree it was very hard um, we are now about 29 minutes from the artist spotlight. So if you guys have not submitted your your name, your uh, portfolio, you can nominate yourself, you can nominate someone else, but you can submit your portfolio in the artist spotlight tab above the chat. We do already have our person for today, but you can submit it for a future artist spotlight. And it's just a, if you don't know what that is, we're just going to pull up their portfolio and we're going to hype and highlight some of their projects and just cheer on a member of our creative community. Whoop de woo. That's right. Those are pretty fun. I like those. I do too. The la- I was uh, hosting last week and it turned out that the um, designer we had on stream has a twin sister and it was her twin sister's portfolio that we were artists oh spotlighting. That's funny. And I did like Nepotism. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't make the connection until like I pulled him up and also I was like, why is it last name familiar? And she's like, oh, that's my twin sister. And I was like, what does this look just oh. like you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just I was like, I'm gonna pass this on to you because you know her work. Go for it. Have fun. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, I um that was like last time I was like, oh, you know, I was like trying to make small talk about the arts. I was like, oh, you know the okay, yeah, you you talk. I'm <laughs> I've had a couple like that where I'm ad living like, here. I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's been a few artist spotlights where the person's like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. And they just go on and talk. And I'm like, you do your thing. I will just sit here and cheer yeah, you on. I'm, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Tell me what go. to click. I will I will make this happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carrie says, do you have an Instagram? That I do. Um, the underscore Blackstock. It used to be just my name, but that was a whole whole thing that I ended up like losing the password to and got locked out of and blah 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 oh, blah. No. Feel like I could probably try to get it again, but I just too lazy. I don't blame you. Yeah. Do not blame you at all. So... Thank you for linking it, Wade. He linked your Instagram in the chat. He's sweet. He's the best. I guess this is a good time too. If you have not uh, registered for Adobe Max, it's free. So you have no excuse. Max.adobe.com. And up until Max, there's um, visual conversations that Max Adobe is hosting in. There's a word I'm looking for. You got it. You can do it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to think of a different way to say it. Uh, happening like in anticipation and up to Max to get you hyped mm-hmm. up for it. We're hosting mm-hmm. creative visual conversations and this week's theme is illustration. You can go and submit your work and have it have it hyped by some really awesome professionals in the industry. It's pretty cool. It's a really cool thing. They're, uh, I think... This week is illustration and I'm going to see if I can pull it up because I can also, I'll show that. I'll show it briefly during like artist spotlight um, just so yeah. people can see, but it's maxvisualconversations.com. So the current theme's illustration and there's an option. There's inspire wonder, which is hosted by Alice Lee, who we love here at Adobe. Um, we have the power of image image by Aurelia Durand. Um, Actually, I'm going to share my screen right now. Just one moment, por favor. Yeah, let me to... do... yeah, I'm going to share the screen. You, you're good. You just keep going. Uh, okay, okay. Um, let me know. Yeah, you just keep going. They're just, we're just going to show the uh, 
visual conversations and we'll switch back to you shortly. Gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah, so you just keep going. Um, I'm, yeah, gonna, so I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, you just keep going. Um, so we've masked visual conversations. One really fun thing about this website is you can choose the background you want. So you've got all these different really cool gradients. I'm gonna pick pink because I like this purple to pink gradient. So we've got Inspire Wonder, hosted by Alice Lee, The Power of Image by Relia Durand, um, Protect Our Planet with Fabiana Rodriguez, Nature's Inspiration with Rick Ostenbrook. I hope I said that right. And Repurposed Rejects with our very own Rob Zilla. Um, so you can go and you can see some of the conversations taking place, what the theme is, how to incorporate the theme, how to work with the theme, and you can join the conversation and create and submit based on this theme and have uh, feedback from, from Alice and other amazing artists. Um, and you can also view the past conversations. So you can see like October, the week of October 4th was design. And last week was photography and you can go in and view the art at that point. The submissions for those are already closed, but you can still, you can still view and read and interact. You just can't post anything new. So this I think is very much worth it to check out if you get a chance. And we will now go back to Chris's screen. Still, just still here. Still doing your thing. Still doing my thing. Let's see, let's lock it out. Still doing your thing. Um, yeah, Anthony says hypes to the hype to the max for Adobe Max. <laughs> yes, it. I'm I'm excited for Max. I signed up for a lot of the illustration tracks. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look, I'll look and see which ones I've signed up for. Cause I, I did it a few weeks ago and then I went into deadline mode. So I forgot gotcha. what I signed up for. Um, but you know, we've got, I mean, there's imagine dragons is on this list. Like, come on, Henry Golding, like who doesn't love Henry Golding? I enjoy him in crazy rich Asians. That is a fantastic movie. I was going to say, I don't know who that is. Enlighten yeah, me. he's, yeah, if you've seen Crazy Rich Asians, he's the main dude. Ah, gotcha. And he was also in like, he's been in a few things recently, um, but that's what I know him most through. And yeah, so I'm going to see which ones did I, my scheduled ones. Where's my calendar? Yeah, because I, there's some incredible, incredible talks happening and it's a matter of just narrowing it down. Yeah, right. Oh, I found it, okay. That was like my, the hardest part about Lightbox. Like any, any yes! convention, it's just like, okay, there's oh like uh, 30 different talks and like streams right now. Like how do I choose which one to watch? And am I gonna miss out on something else? Yes. Lightbox was hard. I ended up like, as soon as I would realize one was live, I was already late for it. And if it was a live zoom one, I didn't get in. I, um, for the most part, I was like trying to look at it like, okay, what won't be on the site later? Yeah, like what is was... only, only live. And then, you know, and then the other ones, it's like, if it said like on the site forever, I was like, okay, I yeah. can like come back to this at some point but like, what can I only see right now? Yeah, there so were I, a few that were like set to live only, but the at the discretion of the speaker, they would record it and share it later. Okay. Okay. So there are a few that were live only that are still available forever. Okay. Like one of them was um, Amber Aki Huang, I think is her name, mm, who, Juan. Who's that? Um, she has, she's an illustrator who created this little character called Deer Cat. Um, Deer Cat? I love Deer that. Cat. Yeah, like it's a it's a deer and a cat mixed. I have a, I actually bought one. It's in the back corner of my studio. So it's amazing. Um, it's really cute. My dogs have that kept sounds... each dog has tried to steal it, which is why it's now in my in my studio up on the shelf because they can't get it. Um, cat. but yeah, hers were supposed to only be like live only, and they were done on Twitch. But what she did was she saved them and then she put them on YouTube so that they're available. Oh, awesome! Forever. 
That's so there awesome. were a lot of them like that. There were some people that compiled them all. So there's like a running doc for people who were at the conference to be able to access okay. everything. That's very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, because um, it's just, there's so much great content that mm-hmm. you like. But it was, like, it's overwhelming. Wanna... It is. And that's the thing. It's like, you're excited about it and you would never say like put less on there. But exactly. at the same time, you're just like, that's too much. It's too yeah, much. It, you feel like you you ran a marathon to a degree because you're just like my brain can't keep up. There's too much. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, exactly. How many can you actually watch at once without getting burnt out? Yeah, but it's it's really been it was a fantastic conference. It's kind of how it felt with Adobe Max last year too, because a lot of things will run simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Um, so you pick and choose, but I think for the most part, almost everything, if not everything, is available to rewatch for the rest of the year or like the okay. entire like upcoming year okay um yeah like a couple of minor like lauren hom one of my one of my good friends is speaking and hers is three ideas for freelancers to diversify income streams oh, and wow. she is very good at that that's so, she's very that good like at a that. really a really good one to listen to i yeah, i've watched her like it's, it's like everything she does kind of turns to gold she's just very good at like at marketing herself um mm-hmm. But she's also just a very engaging personality and she's really fun to hang out with and talk to. And so she's she's doing one on a talk on diversity, on diversifying income streams. There's one that's called uh, Concept Art Break Artist Block with Emergent Design with Sam Nielsen. Well, like it, like it. Yeah, Adam J. Kurtz is speaking and his is, you are here for now, passion, purpose, and finding your way. Um, Rob Zilla is doing one, which, which is a creative potluck and it's collaborating with Rob Zilla and Adobe Fresco. So he'll be doing stuff live with elements he's collected. Nice. Uh, let's see. We've got, uh, Octavia Bromel, who is a former Adobe creative resident. Um, she's doing one called keeping a sketchbook for fun and inspiration. And her work is really fun. I, I discovered it through the Adobe creative residency crew and i am trying to see i gotta look up what her what her uh instagram handle is because her instagram is just really really fun um it's tink outside the box like tinkerbell t-i-n-k outside the box um and her her instagram is just like it's very bright it's very fun and it's really nice to look at so like go check that out um Yeah, it's in the my box Discord. Man, why can't I just be faster at painting? This, this is, is your process. Embrace it. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys, if you're signed up for Adobe Max, like share what share with us some of like the the talks that you're excited for. Cause I know that there are, there, there's so many that I didn't even like looked at yet and found. Cause I think they added stuff after I signed up. Oh, those little spirits and they're so creepy. I love it. Yeah, I know. I'm so like, I'm like, ah, I, wish, I always wish I had more time. So I've, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see this one to the end. Yeah. Uh, just because I think it's there's going to be a lot of fun just details to kind of play with and especially with this like smoke and create some glow effects and stuff. But trying to I'm trying to avoid like uh, typical you know layer effects or like do yeah. the layover stuff. Like I've wanted to really try to make like try to paint all of the effects with brushes just to give it more of the vibe of like a painting. Um, so I'm going to try to avoid um, using any kind of like glowing and stuff, you know, try, I'm going to just try to do it all with brush and color. Yeah. Interesting so, thing too, I want to point out is like you're, you have no, no stark white in here at all. Like everything is an off gray or a warm gray. Like there's right, no which white. Is, yeah. Cause I want to save that for, Ugh, like highlights like where i really want it to like be punched up so i'm completely avoid i want to knock everything off of white i've learned to yeah. like just no make anything white try not to ever use black 
It's like, yeah. unless you really need it, or it's like, you really want to punch up your focal point or something like that's where it's needed. But other than that, and it's funny, cause that's totally something they, they do that as much in digital art, but in traditional art, especially oil painting, that's like rule number one is like, do not use black. Unless yeah. you're doing a specific kind or something, but it's like, mix it, mix it yourself, mix a color that's close to it because it's just going to resonate more. It's going to have more, I love viscosity, yeah. but like, it's going to, it's going to read better on the canvas. Uh, it's going to read better to your eye. I was going to say, I, I feel like I remember being, it went in like painting class. They said, never use black right out of the tube. Instead, mix colors to make black. Yes, ex that's exactly it. So. I'm just gonna kind of get some of this in there. I had a brief thought, and it like completely just like skipped and left my head. So I'll see if it if it will come back. Oh, good. Yeah, don't you love when that happens? Yeah. Well, you got me thinking. I like went. It's so funny. I went back home and I was like, my whole shot. She just like, she just went and like you know got tested and everything. And like she's, I was like for the ADHD I was just like yeah I feel like I really <laughs> need to do that because just that day like I had started like five different projects she's just like mm -hmm. you just left it like halfway I'm like but I got distracted by the thing that you asked me to do yeah. next <laughs> and I was like this seems to be a recurring theme of my life for yeah the last 37 years so maybe I should and it's it's interesting because like it I, I'm able to like focus better on things, but I have to make sure that I'm focusing on the right thing. Oh, I mean, I've, cause I've, um, mm -hmm. I guess I've, I've taken stuff maybe that wasn't mm -hmm. prescribed by a doctor, but my friend, you know, back in the day with like Adderall and stuff and like doing like late night uh, art projects or whatever. And that was exactly yeah. it. Like, as long as I was focused on my project, it's like, oh, I could, I'll sit for like 10 hours straight. Just, yeah. Like I'm here, but if I was on something else, I'm going to sit there on that other thing for 10 hours. Yeah. It's, I will say like, it's really nice because I'm able to draw without overthinking anything that I'm drawing anymore. And which is great that, yeah, that, that helps me so, so much, especially when it does come to deadlines, but it's also nice because I can walk into the kitchen and doing dishes. Isn't this like mountain I have to climb. It's like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just move the dishes into the sink. It's not that hard. Like, and I sit there, I'm yeah. like, why was this so hard for 33 years? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got, I got married and that, uh, I became a great dishwasher after that. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure prior to that, I had like plants growing in my sink from one of my San Francisco apartments. I was this guy. I was, I was filthy. That's I, that's when I was like smoking a pack a half like a half a pack or a pack and a half a day like in my room, oh, like no. total like just downtown San Francisco artist. It's like that eh, shower like once a week, you know. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, when I lived alone, it was it was easier for me to like go all week without doing dishes, as gross as that is. But it was like my brain at that time. Like I didn't want, like, I wanted to just focus on the art. Like I didn't want to worry about anything else. Yeah, it was a distraction. It was a distraction. It was a distraction. And it's like, yeah. I didn't want to like, it's like, I only have room for this many distractions. And yeah. I know if that that's going to mess up the thing that I have planned in my head. There was a, there was a brief period where like I was able, I would, I had someone coming to clean my apartment for me. Like, cause I just could oh, not nice. compartmentalize <laughs> my brain for it. I, it was like once a month and it was, I found it in a very affordable way. So I was just like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if it helps. And it was really nice because she would do, she would go and do like the nitty gritty stuff that I couldn't get myself to do. So like right. dusting and baseboards and all those things. And it, I could just sit at my desk and keep working. Um, that's, that sounds good. And I, yeah. And, and I recognize that that was like a luxury. That's not something I would be able to do long-term, but it was something that just like in that point in my life, I was like, I need to do something to make, to just make my life a little bit easier. If I can't make this happen, I need to have somebody that can do it for me. Yeah. And that's, but it's good to recognize that stuff as well. Yeah. Because sometimes you just need a helping hand. 
Yeah. It's like with to help my... you get to that next phase or, you know, figure out how to do it on your own or. Yeah. Like I've had yes. an accountant for years because I don't want to mess up anything when it comes to like my finances. Hey, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Everybody should yeah. have an accountant. It's... I, we just, I feel like I've finally found like a great uh, tax lady that does. So like, especially with being freelance and stuff, it's always just yeah. been a nightmare. And like, it's so hard to, her, to find someone like, who oh. knows freelance. Yeah. She's well, and yeah, she like works, uh, she's like a Hollywood person. So it's like, she works purely in like entertainment and freelance. And so oh, it's like, they dream. know all the, yeah. yeah, all the tricks and be like, oh yeah, this is this, this is that. Like you can get this credit. You can do, I'm just like, oh my God. That my was... favorite is write off time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do you have to and write off? Like, like, they're like, what did you buy for your business? And I'm like, do, 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 do. It's like, all right, we're going to write yeah. all this off. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Everything first, was related to my business. Yeah. The very first year I, I freelanced, I, um, the accountants, the, the accountant business that I use is like, they're guys that my family is that my parents knew for years. Oh. And so my mom like went with me for the first appointment. Cause she was like, I just want to make sure that like, you know what you're doing and he's aware of what's going on. I was like, okay, that's fine. And the first like 10 minutes was just them catching up. And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> And then he's like, well, which one is this? Because it's my oldest. And he's like, oh, you've grown up. And I'm like, yep. Hi. <laughs> but he was like, you know, he's like, make a list of just everything. And we got it to the point where like, I think my taxes that year were like super low because I didn't make a ton. And my write-offs were able to cancel a lot of stuff out because I had bought a yeah. bunch of stuff for the for my like new business, essentially at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, when you, yeah, I was going to say when you, that's like, it's the, it's the, Worst of times and the best of times when you're mm -hmm. investing in your business and freelance and like, or maybe getting a new computer, a new Wacom or like software, yeah. whatever. It's like, yeah, you can write all that stuff off. And it's even yeah. better when you're just starting too. It's like, um, yeah, totally. That's it that's makes funny. a it makes a huge difference. And it's like I joke because I early on in my in my freelance, I had to get a new computer at that point because the one I had was not able to to handle the files I was working on. Uh -huh. So I had to, like, I was able to finally like justify, like, let's upgrade the computer and get what I need. Yep. And I was like, yep. well, it's, I was like, it's kind of like buying a new toy. And I, I was talking to my mom about it. I was like, it's like buying a new toy. She goes, it's not a toy though. It's a, it's a computer for work. And I was like, but to me, it's like a toy. Yeah. That's that a, I get to write off. Toy. Yeah. I, I would get want this it, no matter what. Uh, yeah. Like I will use it as both business and a toy. Like yeah. <laughs> It's fun. Don't um, let it not be a toy. Yeah. <laughs> um, where is it? Uh, yeah. Anthony goes, wow. Marriage saved your life. <laughs> in our, in oh my gosh. You don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was working, I was a project manager at like a street art gallery in the Tenderloin. And we were showing uh, artists, street artists from all over the world and painters a lot of juxtapose uh, magazine painters and stuff and people from all oh, over cool. it was a pretty wild lifestyle um lots of fun got to travel all over london new york la you know miami Went, would go That's... to art basel every year and it was it was fun but it oh, was that's awesome <laughs> yeah it was pretty it was pretty wild times but yeah it, my life's a lot more boring not boring I shouldn't say that. It's crazy yeah. having it's children. A new phase. It's a different. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't need all that madness anymore. Um, yeah. This is. Yeah, I like. I like the the drawing lately and being able to. I feel like stay there's at home a and be a soccer. I feel coach, like it's so. interesting because there's like points in your life where you're like, yeah, this works just great, and you're like, I have all the energy in the world, I can handle this, and then you hit a point where you're just like, nope, I'd like naps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't gotten there yet i'm i wish i could be a nap person i my wife is she can do the napping game i feel like i'm not good at it I, every time i take a nap i'm like i'm so tired still this didn't work at all this my is problem is my nap is never 20 minutes it's like an hour and a half i can't i can't do the 20 that's, minute close my that's eyes that's what i mean thing. it's like it's I, I can't i can't do the proper napping where it's like, okay, if you nap for 
20 minutes, your body will feel refreshed. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do that. There's been maybe like twice in my life that I've been able to just kind of lay down, shut my eyes for 20 minutes and get back up and feel okay. Yeah. Where it wasn't like necessarily me even needing to go to sleep or nap. I just needed to shut my eyes for a few minutes and just kind of veg out. Yeah. And when I do that, yeah, when I do, I grab my dog and I'm just like, come on, we're going to (laughs) cuddle. Yeah. I, uh, my, my littlest one is he's almost two and he's just like, he's just a madman. So it's trying to like constantly keep up with him. Yeah. And it's like never ending. Like he just is like, he'll run around the house and like, he'll literally just grab things off of the shelves. Oh. And like, dish towels. Oh, okay. And like, like whatever he can, he's just like, like running down the house I'm like all right oh, that's <laughs> so I'm not getting funny. not getting anything done today <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting <laughs> like how you prioritize once like you have more responsibilities you're like okay how much actual yeah. time do I have today and like how can I do this I have just had a dog so it's like the priority was Similar. just like, make sure he goes outside to go to the bathroom. He's yeah. little though. So like, it's easy okay. for me because I, I like little dogs, but we have a golden. I love little dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. I grew up with like little dogs and big dogs, but the big dogs were always a result of my sister wanting the big dog. Gotcha. Um, and so the current golden is my sister's dog. Um, but she learned to retrieve things because she is aptly a golden retriever. Um, yeah, but my sister would be like, sense. go get, go pick this thing up for me. And she learned that if you bring things, you get treats. So she instead became a klepto and steals things to get treats. <laughs> I can't, like, every time I go into the living room, the clicker's gone. And I'm like, wait, I, I'll walk into, like, my sister's room and she'll hold it up. And I'm like, I was like, can she not, can you teach her to not steal the clicker, please? Yeah, there's, like, one I, thing that you do not touch. Yeah. And she like, she'll do that with like the, um, like a dish towel. She'll run up and take a dish, a dish towel and she'll bring it to you. And like, I did good. And I'm like, I didn't ask for this. I love you. And I'm proud of you, but I did not ask for this. Um, we have just under just a little over two minutes until the artist spotlight. Okay. So you keep on working and I will announce it when it's time. But this is looking awesome. Thank you. Hoping. Well, I always try to get it finished with the thing, and I, it's never gonna happen. <laughs> I feel. I mean, I gotta, when are we? I gotta make, are we truly I gotta ever done? Simple. Yeah. Right. Let's make it too complicated. I'm Shoot. looking up. I'm. I'm trying to find like the Pantone for your, your mint green mm. color here. Oh yeah. And yeah, do it. just because I want to know, but it didn't. Link to the right color. Let's see. Mint three five one C. Mint three five one C. That kind of looks. Let me see. What did you call Pantone. it? Spectral mint. I feel like yeah. that's much better. It's much better. Spectral mint. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Three five one C is pretty darn close. Okay. I don't want to talk to your sales team, Pantone. But if you want to send me a book, I won't say no. Oh yeah. Okay. So Pantone three, five, one C would be that. So like, if you were sending this to a printer, you'd have to tell them like, I want it to match this Pantone. Yeah. If you guys could just make this happen. Thanks. Everyone's really confused about the fact that I called a remote a clicker. Really? <laughs> yeah. Change, I call it ch- changer. Is yeah. I, more common? I don't know. I don't know. I, is it like a Midwest thing maybe? Cause my parents always called it a clicker. Clicker changer. Remote control. Yeah. I've never yeah. said like, will you hand me the remote? It's always, will you hand me the clicker? Clicker. Yeah. I've, I've, heard, yeah. I've heard all of them. Yeah. That's, that one's not, that one's not far off. Yeah. Anthony goes clicker. I was so confused for a second there. I was thinking of those things that you used to train dogs, but I got there in the end. Oh yeah. I do. Yeah. Like things. Oh. Stoney says, <laughs> yeah. Um, Stoney says, it sounds so weird hearing someone in their thirties say clicker. <laughs> Um, 
And Wade says, apparently there are different names for remotes all over the US. It's a thing. It's a thing. And then he Let me... and he says, let's start some new ones. Clicker. Yeah, Stoney says clicker is an old phrase. Yeah, it's is it? Is it? I'm pretty sure like it's my parents used it growing up, so that always stuck with me. So it's the clicker. Now you're old. Just like it's, now you have to do it. Yeah. Well, it is officially artist spotlight time. So we are right. going to get set up here. Yay, artist spotlight. Uh, I don't want to stop. Yes, artist spotlight. Just kidding. I'm excited. Yay. Okay. I shared the correct screen. I was like, I don't want to do the wrong one. All okay. right. Hooray, everyone. You so ready it's to time. Go? I'm okay. ready. Are you ready? Awesome. Yes. So. Today, our artist that we are highlighting is Dorina Baneva. So everyone give Dorina a round of applause. Hooray! Um, and I saw that Dorina was in the chat, so hopefully she is still here um, and hanging out with us. So Dorina is a caricature designer, character designer, and an illustrator in Bulgaria. Nice. I said, my name is Darina Boneva, and I'm an animator by education, recently moved to illustration. I'm based in Varna, Bulgaria, specializing in character design and environment design, mostly landscapes and scenery. I work mostly in the field of portraits and caricatures, but I'm also open to working in the field of storyboarding, illustrations, character design in various styles, both traditional and digital. So we have a lot of options to pick, pick from here in terms of what we would like to highlight. So it looks like they've done a lot of um, the PS daily creative challenges. Yeah. Want to jump on first or? Sure. Yeah. Pick. Go ahead. I'm kind of curious to see what some of these are once they're clicked on. All right. Well, here's where let's look at Inktober in progress. Okay. Nice. And these look like they're actual Got some traditional media here, I think. That's, that's what it's looking like to me too. Um, Serena, if you want to confirm in the chat that this is that you're doing this in traditional media, let us know. Um, so their Inktober is a journey themed around Halloween and full of magic. Ah. And they separate their drawings into three separate projects. So one to 10, 11 to 20 and 21 to 31. We got so crystals. Still, yeah, some animals finding crystals in the wood. Ooh, I like got this one. Suit. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a little rabbit in a wolf costume. It's, it's a little it's slightly unsettling. I like it. I like the uh I like some of the bleeding that's happening with the ink. Um especially on that one with the kind of like yeah. a water effect. Um that's pretty cool. It's uh, that's something really cool uh you can do traditionally that's really hard to replicate digitally yeah. or at least you know using your finger as a smudge tool um mm -hmm. is is so much fun uh, in traditional inking or yeah. just using like a water brush oh, this is cool yeah Dorina says they're using watercolor pencils and markers okay so that's where the the watercolor pencils yeah watercolor so you kind pencils of see some of that bleeding fun. yeah definitely Nice, I like the witch. Yeah, I like the the really big contrast in the tones of gray as well. Like the focus, mm -hmm. you know, these subjects are a darker focus and everything else sort of recedes into the background. Yes. Very like a uh, story central here. Yeah, this one's look cool. At, look at the little Is cobweb that... van. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. A little bone chair, a rocking chair, maybe. Young magician turned on the TV to watch and then got hypnotized. Oh no, how do you get out of that? It's gonna happen. We got pressure. I think it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else we got? We got Picking a broom. Yeah. That's, I never even thought about that. There'd be multiple brooms for a witch. I yeah, there'd be this one magic one. The second one is very um, Fantasia. Yes. It's ready to go. The, uh, yeah, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Fantasia. Let's see. 
You want to just do, you want to do the superheroes? Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So, okay. If you were a superhero or villain, what would your character look like? What superpowers would you possess? For this collaborative project, the art squad each created an emblem and or character design to represent their chosen superpower. Dan Ross put together the poster portion of the project with all of the emblems for each character. There was a mix of superheroes and villains for the final result. For the second half of the project, I took the individual character files and added some motion and after effects. Uh, Can you guess what each character's superpower is? So it looks like there's multiple owners. So we've got Jack Watson, who is often in the chat. Lauren Valentina, Whitney Neal, LV, Dan Ross, Randall Casey, Lauren. There's a whole, this is so a whole she, crew. So I think she did all the after effects in here. Okay. Yeah, if you could confirm, Correct. Doreen, I'd love to know what your what your part of the project was. This That's is awesome. Cool, yeah. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah, the, af the that one's animation really nice. it gives a lot of um, a lot of depth Increase, to it. Yeah, way more impact. Oh, this one's cool too. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So it's a bunch of different artists, and then it looks like she applied the After Effects. Yeah. To the artwork. That's a Very cool, that's nice. a cool idea for a collaborative project. It really is. Yeah. It's um, very, it is definitely very interesting. I'm not sure if, if Jack is the one who did the, the, the animation. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know. We, yeah. <laughs> oh, and she's in the project. Yeah. I see. I see. It's a whole yes. group project. So that's okay. really cool. Very so let's cool. see if this is a, okay. This is, this is just Dorina's work. Okay. Um, they wanted to create a sticker pack and had a hard time designing on deciding on a theme. They came across some odd doodles and immediately knew these animals needed to were going to be perfect. These are pretty cute. Those are cute. I like the eyes. This is um, this reminds me of Wallace and Gromit, Sean the Sheep. Yeah, Ardman. Yeah, the yeah Ardman style. Yeah. Uh, stop motion. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Yeah, those are cool. Very nice. And then we should look at some of these PS daily challenges. We've got, oh, look at Kath, the one that they did with Kathleen. So it was live shapes, transform tools, adjustment layers, clipping masks, effects and color, and frame tool. And it looks like it was uh, can label designs. So using Photoshop to create can labels based on a different tool every day. That's cool. Yeah, I really, I like this right here. This, yeah. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, the layers are really, really cool. <laughs> Kid getting, or the, the watermelon going down the face. <laughs> Is that heavenly watermelon shrub seltzer? Yes. Yeah, I like that. I like this one a lot. Yeah, that one's really nice. I could see that. Like, I could see that in a store as like a fancy lemonade. Set I do like the berries. face. Yes, the grumpy grapes. It's nice. I like the face. This one's cool too. It's got a bit of a um, John Bergerman, John Bergerman style, mm -hmm. like some John Bergerman influence. Um, Starship yeah, this is a cool. This is a cool challenge. Really is the the daily yeah. creative challenges are really cool. They've got some great ideas. Um, let's look at this one with Sam Peterson, and then we'll get back to work. Cool. Um, so this was to this was for experienced designers to go back to basics. Okay, never hurts to go back to basics. Um, from exploring different materials and textures through the usage of brushes and photo manipulation to the use of light and shadow, there's something for everyone. Uh, for these challenges, they used stock images from Unsplash. So day one was placing a text into an environment using basic Photoshop tools. Right. Oh, look at that. Cool. They even got the, um, the uh, reflection yeah. really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, day two, mix and match animals to create a fantasy creature. <laughs> 
That's that's a good one. Yes. <laughs> that would be terrifying to watch a pug <laughs> towards you. But like it'd also be so cute. Yes. yes. I'm boop the nose. Boop. Oh um and then day three, oh. move remove an object from a background and place it into a new environment <laughs> using mass color balance Hello. perspective tools. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, like they managed to make the make it look like it fit the environment too, because if they'd use this just as is, it would be too cool for the image. Right, right, right. I don't, is there a this giant goat? It almost looks like there's a new uh, sky oh, sorry, that's placed a, that's in That's an here. Ibex probably, or Ibex, Ibex. Meh. Um, add a painted effect to a portrait or photograph using brushes and filters. Very nice. There you go. And add color to an illustrated line drawing. Oh, very nice. This very is their cool. work. Yeah, yeah, nice. And then add light and shadow to a scene using blending modes and then try using Lightroom and camera raw filter to edit the contrast color and exposure. Okay, so it looks like they're going to combine these two images. Right, right, right. To make it work here. So look at that. They even got the reflection yeah, of this light. Yeah, it's not easy. And look, they they made his watch glow. Mm -hmm. That looks cool. We've got create a sci-fi themed portrait using neural filters and layer mats. Have you played with neural filters? No. Oh, they're fine. I think I think I actually watched a little bit of this with Sam. I think he was doing these, and I was just like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, you can like make you can like age a portrait. It's really weird. What? Okay. It's I'm really curious. creepy. They were doing it to uh, Conan O'Brien last year at Max. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with Conan, I'm sure it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, great job, Jarena. Everyone give Jarena a follow on Behance. Great job. Yeah, we would awesome. love seeing your work. Thank you for sharing it with us. And if you would like to be considered for a future artist spotlight, everyone, make sure that you submit your work to the artist spotlight tab above the chat. So now we're going to get out, get on back to Chris's page. Oh yeah. And should, um, we've got about that. 15 minutes before we have to um, start winding it down. Hold on, let me, I'm sorry. You're fine. It's not giving, there we go. Share screen. Okie dokie. I can do it. All right. We believe in you. <sighs> All right. Okay. So we've got, got your screen back up. We're good to go. This is where we're at. Most of the stuff has got some kind of level of shadow okay. at this point. I um, love that smoke so much. Yeah, it's fun, right? It it's stands a great out design so element. Nicely. It's got the nice lead in to, you know, the focal point with, uh, the big smiling grin there. But let's see what we could do here. What do I want to do? Oh, you know, we got to do that monocle. Oh, yeah. Because you have to draw what, like highlights and stuff to make it look like glass? Yes, we would have to do that. Add a I was right. Um, let's see. Is that the monocle? Yes. Excuse me. Wade says, what's your plan for the next 15 minutes? That's a great question, Wade. Um, <laughs> work on this monocle, maybe add some highlights. <laughs> there we uh, go. That's, that's about it. And if anyone that. has some... Oh, sorry, ahead. go ahead. That's all right. I was going to say, if anyone has any last uh, questions, now's the time to throw them in. And if you're on YouTube and you are asking questions, I don't see them. So join us on behance.net slash Adobe Live so I can actually see your questions and relay them to Chris. Sorry, I've had allergies for the past few days and I feel like they are just starting oh, to kick back in. So you're, you're start, fine. Uh, we had a we had a storm system roll through last night and uh -huh. it brought a little cold front, which I welcome. I love I, it's fall. It needs to be chilly outside. Right. But I so always fun. it never fails that every season change when we go from like with we have like 30 degree temperature changes in a day right. my face is like yeah no thanks yeah where where do you live again uh illinois northern illinois oh, oh yeah uh, it gets cold it gets very cold my first 
my, my first winter here. So I moved here November, 2019 uh-huh. in or no, 2018, November, 2018. And then January, 2019, there was a polar vortex that rolled through. Oh, wonderful. And it was negative 30 with a negative 50 wind chill. That's amazing. Sounds... It was, it was cold. There was ice on our, on our doorknobs and our, our lock, the lock in the garage was completely frozen shut, like frozen solid. Oh. Um, I have a nice big window. My room was absolutely frigid and my heater was doing barely anything in comparison oh, that sounds a it was crazy. very cold yeah was, i can't do that i can't, mm-hmm. can't no. i was i was sitting i'm like welcome to illinois yeah my brother <laughs> was, uh he moved to alaska oh my so, goodness yeah his his wife uh grew up in in homer and so that's where they ended up moving um really cool place i haven't been there yet but just like their property is really awesome and but yeah just the average temperature during the summertime is like 55 60 degrees oh wow it's like oh yeah no i don't nope nope no 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 Mm -hmm. no 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 i don't want that at all i love like i love fall anywhere between about 40 and 55 i think is a beautiful temperature it's very comfortable yeah Cause you can walk outside and you don't sweat. Like you can enjoy being outside without layering up in a bunch of stuff. Completely. It's like, but I, yeah, it's like, for me, it's like, I don't really like the heat's okay, but it's not my favorite. So, I, you know, I living, I in, living in LA is like love, hate. It's like, Oh, you can always get stuff done because the weather's usually so mellow, but at the same time, it's yeah. like, it can feel like a time warp because you're like, yep, just another day of sunshine. <laughs> That's how it wasn't in, in Florida was it was, we get like three days a year where it would actually drop into like the forties and feel kind of like a, a fall day. Yeah. January, February, March, like the high was in the low seventies. So that was always really nice. But as soon as April hit, it was like 90 degrees and it just got hotter and hotter and hotter. And um, I don't, I don't miss that heat. I don't yeah. miss it at all. Um, yeah. But it was it was like comparing here to there. It's uh-huh. like you said, it was kind of like a time loop. Like you, there was no, there was no progression. It felt like through the year. Here, right. there's season changes, so it actually feels like there's some progression happening through the year. Yeah, and I, I wish, I wish I had a little more of that. Definitely don't, don't have that much in LA. It's not. I mean, it's not. There's worse things in the world. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's hard to complain about because the weather really is amazing for the most part. Yeah. And like I said, it kind of allows you to do a lot of outdoor stuff that I think most people are like, yeah, I can't. There's like four months out of the year. If I, like, I can't do that yeah. at all. Like, I can't even think about that. So, um, I do appreciate that part about it. Yeah, it is. It is interesting because like here I we do actually take advantage of when it's hot out versus like in Florida, we stayed inside all the time. Right. Florida. I only know Florida through Miami. Oh, that's oh, that's like really hot. Yeah, I know. I grew up in Daytona and it was just like, because oh, okay. everyone was like, well, aren't you like, don't you go to the beach all the time? I'm like, no, I have school and homework yeah, and I don't like about... the beach. Like, Beach isn't fun. I like yeah. the smell of the beach and I like walking on the beach. I was not that one that enjoyed sun tanning on the beach because I am pasty white and I burned thinking about the sun. Feel, feel you on that one. I am yeah. also relatively relatively pale and yeah. freckly mm-hmm. so it's like i just get age spots as i'm calling them now yeah <laughs> i'm getting I'm what like, is uh, future age spots on my face and my hands <laughs> I've, I've had enough bad burns in my life that i'm just like no i'll stay out of the sun thank you very much and yeah. you know my family makes fun of me because i pull out spf 100 uh, when we go on oh, the nice. boat like, but like it's nice because like <laughs> well when, when it's you know, when it's, when it's nice out like this for the summer, like it's, it is nice because 
everyone is outside, everyone goes boating, everyone's outside walking, there's festivals, there's all kinds of things going on. Right. And then once winter hits and it's like cozy season, but mm-hmm. you get uh, about five months of warmth a year. So you do take advantage of that time where you actually can be outside in a tank top, you know? Yeah. It's almost like you appreciate that time a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Though it is nice. Really? Like my, there was last year when my family and I go to Northern Wisconsin to go fishing and it was like 95 degrees with a ton of humidity. And I was like, I left Florida for a reason. Um, and our cabin has no AC. So that was a fun week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was a cabin we rented, but it's like, it had no AC. So I was like, Oh, awesome. This is wonderful. I am so sticky right just, now. Everything just is just I'm like everything. It just feels so great. Um, but this year when we, when we went, it was a lot cooler. So it mm-hmm. was still nice and warm out. Like you could still hop in the water, but you weren't sweltering all day. And that was really nice. Yeah. I could, I could see that. Yeah. That, that I can get behind. I can, I can deal with the summer where it's not sweltering. Um, Lamont says, come to Virginia. The humidity here is deadly. Uh, I went to, this is gosh, this is, it's like uh, 22 years ago. Oh my God. Um, my cousin got married in, uh, Nashville. And so I flew out there when I was, uh, I was like 15 and it felt like when we got out of the airport, someone's just like, here's your hot, wet blanket. Here's your yeah. hot, wet. I was like, <laughs> what is this? Like, I need to shower now. Mm-hmm. Like, this is horrible. <laughs> it's Every like, there's time. Nothing, nothing enjoyable about this whatsoever. You don't like, you don't realize how humid a place is in, is until you fly into it. Like flying into oh. Orlando, I never realized how humid it was anywhere you went until I walk out of the air, the, the plane into the terminal. Yeah. And I'm like, it's humid inside. How did I live in this? <laughs> this is what this, yeah, we shouldn't be, humans shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be here. This yeah. Is for the animals. It's not for us. Yeah, this like, is for the it's alligators. Like going into like Phoenix or something. You're just like, this isn't. People shouldn't live here. This is yeah. this is where you go to. This is where you die. This is the desert. There's just yeah. death unless you are specifically made for it. Don't bring exactly. more air conditioning here. It's not going to help. <laughs> it's too hot. Exactly. So we've got about like two minutes before we got to start wrapping things up. All right, and you can kind of start to see like, I will. This is basically what I'm going to be doing for. Um, as I move along, sorry, I'm a little voice crack. As I move along in the painting, um, I'll be st- kind of starting to add highlights and starting to kind of go back and forth between things and like balancing everything so that I'm not just applying the same direct highlights on every little thing. Um, I definitely want to look at where my focal points are. Um, obviously, for me, the Am I not on the right? No, I'm not on the right thing, of course. Um, The monocle and kind of this eye are going to be a big part of that. Um, And so you're going to, you kind of want the eye to be drawn there. So yeah, I'm going to be moving throughout and kind of applying that throughout the painting. I'm obviously not going to get very far in the next minute or two, but uh, I just, I I am glad that I actually got to (laughs) some type of highlights before I left you guys. Just so you can kind of start to see like, just kind of start building some light. And for me in the beginning, like it doesn't really have to be perfect. I'm just kind of finding my way and I will, well, you know, a lot of times I'll be building it up and doing this and that, and then going back and kind of knocking it back down. Yeah. Um, But just kind of just trying to look and see where like kind of some of the immediate places where I feel like I need. And it's, I'm really focusing on like, okay, how do I turn this form? It's not, not so worried yet about like, it's got to be perfect or it's got the proper placement. It's more like, how are people going to read this and how is it going to look as I, as I apply this? Is it, is this in a place that 
is going to pop out this fold of skin or um because then at the end i'll start looking at it more of like okay where do i really want my focal point or is this adding to the painting is this taking away it's like okay even i know there's a highlight here but it needs to be knocked down like two values mm -hmm. just because it's gonna help round out the painting um, very very cool so yeah yeah Sony says what did his name turn out to be engelbert twinkle gaze was the one that was chosen i and, like it uh, i like it I too like it. I, I feel like it fits him and but with that we actually have to wind down um oh, man yeah, i know it's look, i know everything it went so fast and but look at what you accomplished in essentially four hours of work on stream and a little bit out look at of me the stream. look yeah. at you you're amazing okay, um, i got I at least got some highlights you did. There's like some, there's some major depth happening now, Yay. but it's, it really has been such a blast having you this, this last few days. Um, your work is fantastic. I've truly enjoyed uh, talking with you and watching your process as I'm sure other people did too. Where can people find you? Uh, you can go to my website, theblackstock.com. Go to my Instagram, the underscore blackstock. Um, and I'm on Behance as well. Just look up my name, Chris Blackstock. Um, yeah. And hopefully I'll be doing more live streams. I, tr I try, but it's so hard with kids, but, um, yeah, I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to be posting it on the hands in the next week. So follow me, come check it out. I'll be posting it on Instagram as well. I'm really excited to finish this. And I had such a great time, Shauna. This was fun. Awesome. I can't wait to see the yeah. final on, on social media. Well, yeah, definitely. thank you again, everyone. Make sure you stick around for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge replays with Julia Masalska, immediately followed by web design with Terea Talbert. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We hope you had a good time. We enjoyed having you and we hope you have a great day. All right, Bye. guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining.